Thank you, Dr. Lee, for coming in today. And uh, I, I realize that you're a lecturer in physics from Oxford University and uh, that you work on these very complex biological systems and the way that they fold up and so forth. Can you tell us a bit about your work? I'm working, I'm a physicist, so I'm a theoretical physicist. I work on theories of things, but I'm interested mainly in biological problems. And so a lot of the work I do is inspired by biology. For example, one of the things I'm very fascinated by is the question of what we call self-assembly. So you may not, you may probably realize this, but it may not have struck you that something very complicated like our body is not made in an assembly line, like an automobile is, for example, or made in some workshop, it makes itself. It is continuously making itself as we speak. So all these complex little machines that we have inside ourselves, they self-assemble. It's a little bit like taking Lego blocks, which we're used to playing with, and you can make a train out of Lego blocks. But it's as if you take a bunch of Lego blocks, you put them in the bag, you shake it around for a while, and out comes a fully formed train, or out comes a fully formed cell. And that's basically what biology does. And I think that's an astounding achievement. And we would like to understand what the basic fundamental principles are to make these kinds of things. We do that both because we're interested in why this happens, why, why, how does it work, how does it work, but also because we like to emulate it. So anything which is nanotechnology, which is very small macromolecular things we'd like to make, they're too small for us to manipulate them with tweezers and put them together. They really have to self-assemble. So if we could understand the principles that biology uses, we might be able to copy those, do these ourselves, and uh, make beautiful things, that's the idea. And that's the kind of work that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on the, f I work mainly on the computer, so we try to make things on the computer that self-assemble on the computer, which means that we let them move around randomly, and we try to give interaction between them, so that, like the Lego blocks that we, we simulate the shaking, if you wish, on the computer, and they move around, and if we do it right, they form some fully formed objects. So all of this modeling uh, things on computers, I mean, does this relate to real life at all, or is it all just done on your computer? I think we're still one or two steps away from anything real, but I do work on models of viruses, which is one of the simplest kinds of self-assembly systems. You can think of viruses as little shells made of molecules called proteins. You can take these shells, you can put them in a test tube, so they're just by themselves. You can change the pH, the salt concentration, and it'll all dissolve into little bits. You can change it back and they'll form right back into the same little shells, which is amazing. So on the computer, we've, we've made little viruses, computer viruses, that they let the particles move around, we change conditions, and they indeed form shells. Quite similar, we think, to what's happening in real life. So we may have understood something about how viruses work. But if we understand everything, you know, eventually about how things create themselves, which is very remarkable, but then how, how can we understand really the idea of God as a creator? Because it seems to me that makes the whole idea of uh, God as creator a bit redundant. Isn't it? We don't need God as creator if we understand how everything creates itself. So one of the common ideas is that somehow it's greater for if God were to create everything in one go. And it's a little bit like if I come into a toy store and I buy a toy which is completely made. And I think that's really cool. But I think that if I could make a toy like Lego blocks that I could put in a bag, as I said, shake it, and out would come a fully formed train, I think that's a lot more impressive. I think I could, if I could do that, I'd probably make a lot of money selling those. And even though that train might show a few scratches from the process of shaking it, it still would be something much more glorious, I think, for God to make a creation which makes itself than to just make things completely formed. And I think that's an analogy which is helpful in thinking about how things could self-assemble or how even things could have evolved over time. Obviously, I think in our day-to-day -day life, so if we look at a virus in a test tube, nobody, I hope, thinks that the reason why these things self-assemble um, is by God divinely pushing all those little particles into the right space. We believe that they work by what are essentially natural laws. Now, Christians throughout the ages have often said that the natural laws or in some sense the customs of the creature, the, the way that God normally sustains the world. And so for that reason, you can actually look in history and say that there's a theological warrant for studying those properties and expecting them to be regular and maybe even investigate, maybe even something we can investigate and even understand. And so this is how I feel that when I look at something self-assembly, I don't really think it's a miracle, even though I don't, we don't understand how it works. And it's very difficult to understand how it works. But obviously we see it happening around ourselves, and it would be a strange God who had to intervene in those bits that we don't understand.
there's been a temptation sometimes for Christians to say, look, we don't understand how this happens or how that happens. So therefore, it isn't God great? As if God is only found in the lacunas of our understanding. Gaps. In the, the gaps. gaps. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The bits that we don't understand. And I think that's a very poor picture of God. It's a very impoverished picture of God. Because I'm much more interested in seeing God somehow in charge of the whole thing, under sustaining the whole thing, which is the more robust biblical way of looking at things. Thank you very much, Dr. Lane.